Hello everybody, Dren608 here. This is another video on Unconditional Surrender and the uh, Cuckoo Campaign that stands for Cripple the UK, Collapse USSR. My opponent has done very well in both of those cases. Um, we are going into turn June of 1943 and we'll just go ahead and get started here. Declaration of War phase, there's like, is there anybody? All that was left was, uh, the at was, uh, the Netherlands. Uh, we went back here. Um, in the Declaration of War phase, I actually declared war on the Netherlands. So he gets the Netherlands as an ally. Just trying to figure out where he wanted to put it. And now we're into the economy phases, which is fairly quick. The Germans are at full uh, economy here in June of 43. They gave some points to their allies. I think they gave one to Turkey and Italy. Uh, the West, uh, the British are up to 18 production points. As you can see, they just barely get their factory loss underneath the factory count marker here. So we're doing okay there. Um, this is part of the cripple the UK, keeping them under 20 production points for as much of the war as possible. Keeps them from being able to do very much. Um, so that's what that's all about. There's no strategic warfare against the uh, Soviets. There is against the West. Did we have any? I actually snuck a bombed marker in last turn. So he's going to be plus five because he doesn't have an airplane in Norway, and I will be plus three, plus two for the British, or for the US being in a war, and plus one for a bombed marker. Plus five to plus three. Uh, did we have. I had an Ultra, he had a Submarines, but don't think he used it because of uh, being at full factories and not really needing it. Uh, I think I committed, though. We did go to combat commitment. He did not. I did. So he rolled a 6 plus 5 is an 11, halves down to a 6. And I rolled a 5. So I didn't take a factory off him, but I did. By using the uh, marker, it made a difference in that I got another factory back for this. Um, for the UK. Okay, so... That was strategic warfare. I don't remember what we did for strategic movement. Uh, did he move? I think he moved the Panzer back over here. He's going to take that back into Europe, and I think he's going to bring an infantry down to take its place. Uh, Oh, he started to move the first panzer. He's like, wait, no, I'm moving the Africa army over here. Uh, because the Africa army takes two production points to move, it's best to put it in a static defensive position. So slowing down the Russians in Turkey, you know, to keep them from advancing and coming along the southern flank on the German positions is probably the best use of it because normally you don't have the extra production point to spend there late in the war. Uh, I don't think I had any strategic movement for the West. Oh, yeah, and we had to adjust national will for the U.S. because I did lose a unit that he eliminated a unit, but I never took the will point off for the, the U.S. Uh, no strategic movement. So we're into operations. So he's going to take his airplane here. Um, He's going after Gibraltar, obviously. He's got it isolated, and he's trying to mess up the supply here. So he uh, goes after my airplane with the Italians. So we're just setting the die rolls. Oh, by the way, the weather uh, was fair everywhere. So not only does he have fair in June, but then he'll have three more fair weather turns after this, so... 
he's pretty confident. We're both pretty confident he's going to take Gibraltar. I'm trying to figure out ways to make him not be able to take Gibraltar. So he rolled a 1 minus 4, so he's a 1. I rolled a 4 minus 3 is a 1, so... We both, he does, the Italians basically, if that first die roll I could have had a really good split, I could have uh, possibly done him in, I think, but uh, it didn't work, so he, he just runs it up to six and I go up to six. Now he takes that after the fleet, I think. He rolled a two and I rolled a four, so got my fleet up and then I think he goes after uh, two, what is he, I'm not sure where he's attacking. Maybe he's attacking a convoy? Yeah, I got three sorties. He's coming out of Cadiz to take out my convoy. He goes after it again. He gets a three. Uh, two minus four is a one, so he takes... Takes me down. Now he's going to uh, attack with those two units into Gibraltar. So he is uh, four for armor, two for isolation, puts him at six. And then minus, and one more for the Spanish makes him seven, minus one is uh, six again. Uh, then I think he added in another armor to make it eight. So, and he just left it there, didn't use the airplane. Um, this is an armored unit, so there's nothing really I can uh, add to it, but he is halved. So he rolled 5 plus 8 is 13, halved down to a 6.5, which becomes a 7. And then I am um, 3. I rolled 4 plus 3 is a 7, so nothing happened there. And then I think now he just moves. He's like, oh, that didn't work. He's not going to waste another attack. I don't remember if he goes back there and attacks again. So he put an Italian garrison that was in France, ran it up into Rotterdam, which technically is actually illegal. We were going to have to redress this uh, at our next session. I forgot to tell him this. Um, the Italians can't go into the Netherlands because they are active minor. And so are the Italians, and they can't be in each other's territory. So, uh, that's illegal, <laughs> quite honestly. Uh, so he's going to have to rearrange that. Uh, so he's just kind of shoring up his defenses uh, for uh, when the Soviets come back in and the West tries to make an invasion someplace. Uh, he moved a Turk. Just kind of moving his Turks along, having his Swedes set up to keep me from being able to move inland if I decide to invade in Norway. And kind of the same thing here in Finland. He's just like, yeah, keep you at bay. And then put another Turk there to keep the Russians from putting, like, um, a transport, say, in Novorosky or Batum, and then invading here to get a cheap two will points off the, um, the Turks and threatening to run, like, to Suwaz and all the way to Ankara and stuff. So he's just trying to... He's not really trying to stop me as much as mitigate the damage that might come about. So he had his uh, convoy move in infantry into Konigsberg. Yugoslav moved up to the line. And I think we're in the supply phase. Um, so he was checking to see what kind of defenses I had. So he made that German be unsupplied. He forgot to move it. And I think we're in my action subphase. So I had the Americans uh, fly into um, into Metz. Okay, what the Americans did is they they could just barely reach Munich without being able to be intercepted by any German aircraft, so that's my free bomb. And then, uh... I guess I was at five sorties. I don't know. Oh, no. 
Now I'm running my next bombed marker here into uh, into Mets. You'll get one shot at the American bomber. Maybe this is a British bomber. Yeah, this is the British bomber. Uh, he rolled a six, and at minus two, I'm going to get three sorties on me because I ended up with a one. And I say, that's it, I'm done. I forgot to roll the ultra, so we go ahead and do that. Five turns. Uh, we forgot to use, take the ultra out and roll it for the strategic warfare back when I used it, so that's what I was using. Just kind of cleaning up stuff. And then I go ahead and I pick up the BEF and I bring it over here. Take this convoy back and bring uh, this in here. So now I have both convoys here. I thought I had to force H here. There it is. Okay, so... I have a credible threat for invading the Middle East, and then the, the Americans say, you want to intercept me? And they're like, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, so now I have a viable, uh, well, not a viable, but I have somebody in Edinburgh that I can possibly invade with in the, into Norway. And then I go ahead and bring the aircraft into Glasgow just so that it can be there. So the airplane goes to low supply, obviously. And so does the ground unit because I don't have any choice. Okay. Soviets. Uh, we were discussing uh, some of the some of the uh, places the Russians try to kind of have to get to. But because he went um, you know, and took things, it's like, yeah, this is the, these are the things that we're looking for. Is the, you know, he's talking about maybe you should go north, you go south. And I'm like, well, there's a lot more factories for me to recapture in the south, which makes my production go up high enough where I can then activate, like, the entire line, replenish my airplanes, and still have a point or two left. So that's why I'm kind of concentrated where I'm at. Uh, he noticed that I seem to have three armored units to the south, although one is kind of in the center, and then I've got uh, two armored units up here. And it's like, yeah, it's fairly easy for me to move these armored units back and forth between the two places. So I moved this armor up there. Um, and the reason being, the reason why I'm doing this is I'm trying to get the Germans to commit to one place or another, and then I will shift like the turn before, because I can shift a little faster than he can. I'm a little bit more on interior lines there. So now we're in the no supply phase for the West. This was a long, this is a discussion we had. I said, well, you know, Gibraltar's going to fall next turn. And he's like, well, maybe not. And if it doesn't, you can bring in another fleet and convoy in here and supply yourself next turn after I do my attacks, because there'll be nothing for me to attack. And I'm like, good point. So, we took off the airplane, obviously, because I'll never be able to supply it. Um, and then I took off the two American fleets. Now we're doing replenishments. Now you go, why did you take off the American fleets? Well, now this is empty, so now I can grab... Uh, let's see, I've got British fleet and home fleet here. Um, I've got an American convoy here that's going to be at zero. This fleet will be at one, so I can probably get myself into Gibraltar, escorted, and possibly get myself um, supplied for another turn. So, yeah, in July, he's going to have a, his best chance is going to be to attack me in July. And if he doesn't take Gibraltar in July, then at the end of July, I should be able to supply it again, which means in August, he's got to go through what he just did here again, right? And then. Um, again, there's like the one turn stand at low supply, and if I can get through that, I can do it again for September, and then in September, that's the last fair weather guaranteed down here. 
and it's also getting mighty close. I mean, December's when I roll the first time for the for the Soviets to see if they come back in. And if they come back in right away, and he has uh, two armored units, three armored units, and two infantry units all sitting over here, the rooks, the Soviets could possibly, even in poor weather, make some headway on the so on the uh, western front. Now uh, you're going to see his. Uh, his defense in this is going to be, he's done it once before uh, in a BGA tournament game, or not tournament game, but BGA interface game. And one of the things that she does is, actually it was a league game, I guess. Um, what he does is he kind of concentrates the German Air Force against the West initially, like in the summer of 44, and just gives ground on the Soviet front. And then after the summer of 44 is pretty much spent, he does the West doesn't have a lot of time, right? And then he shifts his Air Force to the East to try and stop me, like, along the Hungarian-Polish type border. And he has his air there to, to deal with the Russian Air Force. And when you do that, um, if you can time it right, and, you know, a few halfway decent die rolls, but if you time that right and make it work like that, um, it makes it very, very hard for um, for the West to get ashore and stay ashore. And by the same token, makes it a little bit easier for the Soviets to make up some ground. But you have a lot of ground to give with Germany over here. Okay, you have a lot of ground in Russia that you can give back that you don't care about. Um, at this point, the, uh, you know, the rules of the game, so to speak, um, are survive. And if you can keep the Russians, uh, the Soviets rather, I should say, if you can keep the Soviet army, you know, to just being able to get to the Polish area by the end of 44, when they're just entering Poland, just crossing this weather line, you probably have a good chance of being able to hold out. Yeah, the, the Soviets probably will push on through and get you know, through to, through to the Otter and Vienna, Prague, Breslau, so on and so forth. But you should be able to hold your core cities of Munich, Leipzig, Berlin, and Dresden, because the West will be lucky if it even gets to the Rhine by the end of the game by doing it this way. So I have to think of something else with the West, whether it's try to come up through Spain or, um, you know, something. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do, but for the discussion uh, my opponent and I have had quite a few times, uh, we do think that these, um, if you're if you're playing to win, this is not a bad sort of meta strategy to try and follow with the Axis. Uh, you're getting a medlock so that the Italian troops can go elsewhere. Not a true medlock, but he doesn't have a true medlock yet, but if he can get Gibraltar, it's a true medlock. So then, like, this Italian infantry unit doesn't have to stay in Toronto anymore. He can go, you know, wander off and help garrison France or the Eastern Front or something. So, um, if you get a medlock early in 43, you can set this up to be perfect. Uh, the only thing I have going for me is that I am delaying him. I delayed him a lot uh, on his, you know, on some of his side conquests here. So now the the trick is to um, try and figure out a way to get into uh, either the Middle East or um, you know try and get back some of my strategic warfare modifiers. If I can hang on to Gibraltar, that's going to be giving him a bit of a headache. He's going to end up leaving like a couple of infantry down here to to keep me contained, which is fine because that armored unit sitting there is just fine for that. And then once I feel I don't need Gibraltar anymore, I can just go on, go on my merry way. The nice thing about coming out of Gibraltar is Gibraltar does allow me to invade into the south of France. So if I'm, you know, breaking through on the Bay of Biscay with my units and then I can land in the south of France and outflank the Germans, then maybe I can get past the lore or whatever. 
I really don't know. I don't know how this one's going to play out, but we wanted to try it again, so we are. All right, uh, where are we at? Uh, no supply phase. So that's why I took the stuff off. We're going to keep playing the supply game with the Germans, just to try and hang on to Gibraltar for as long as possible, because, quite honestly, I don't have a viable 1943 invasion. A lot of times in a standard game, if you've taken out Italy, uh, sometime in the summer of 43, and you try to save one surprise attack marker and then do a try and sneak off a, a, in September of 43, you try to sneak off an attack at like Brest here. And if you can do that, uh, then you're, you're cutting into the strategic warfare things. In this case, he has Spain as an ally, so it's not going to work. Uh, that usually works if the Soviets survive, which in most of the games that I've played in lately, the Soviets are not surviving. Um, I've seen other people play Soviet defenses many different ways. I've seen, uh, I've been on the receiving end of it, and I've tried to defend in various ways. Uh, the only time I actually survived with the Soviets was basically due to the Germans not uh, realizing I had conquered Finland, and the Germans didn't realize how many armies I had sort of amassed in Finland. I had like four right behind Leningrad, three or four. And he was guarding Leningrad with a uh, miner. So I dropped a partisan and blew myself out that way. And it was like three three or four armies came streaming out of the Leningrad area and just started um, let's show that area. Uh, they, they came out of Leningrad and they ended up down like at Beloluki and Point South, almost to Smolensk, I think. Yeah, it was like almost to Smolensk. And the entire German army had committed to trying... I was down to like 10 will points or something. He also only had a uh, like an Ita a Spanish... Or, it was another minor unit over in this area. Around here someplace. Um, that was trying to hold the front against a bunch of armies that were sitting in the restricted. He had like Germans down here. And all of his Germans were watching... The restricted USSR while he was trying to push forward to an Archangel in uh, Murmansk, and then he had some armies lined up to push me out of uh, the Caucasus. So he was, you know, he was he was poised to possibly take me out in the first fair weather turn. He didn't get very far; he still had to move a few units to catch up. But that left enough holes that I came out, took out this miner, and then all these I had a whole bunch of armies sitting in here. And we just ran, I mean, we were able to recapture, like, Moscow and Ryzen, and I think we took Yarslov? I think it was Yarslov. So all of a sudden, you know, I had I had cut off his supply, so he had to move his guys back to try and fight, deal with supply. And in the armies that were way far deep, he didn't have anything that could really reach him. So I managed to get all the way down to, like, Kiev and stuff before his armies got back to, like, Kharkov and Dubnovstrik, and then he was able to supply about half his army, and it was a big supply game all through uh, 1942, and he just couldn't muster enough to take out the last, I kept getting will points for cities, so all he was doing was getting back the will points I'd gained when he'd recapture the cities that I took, and I managed to survive until 1943, and then it was just sort of a, a push from then on uh, into Germany. So in the summer of 43, I was actually fighting from, like, the Dnieper River or whatever instead of back here someplace. Normally in the summer of 43, if you survive, you're fighting for this stuff. You know, and you might end up on the Dnieper by the end of 43 or maybe just breach it. But I was fighting there from the beginning of 43, so it was fairly, uh, fairly easy, so to speak, for the Russians, uh, for the Soviets. And then uh, we started... We managed to get an attack in to take Konigsberg, and then we started winning the strategic warfare at the end of 43. And in 44, he was down to 18 or 20 points and having to fight on both fronts. And it was it was not pleasant for him. Um, okay, so that's no supply phase to the West. Enough of me yapping. Uh, Soviets aren't taking anything off. Axis do their replacements. Obviously, airplane, airplane. Uh, takes down his convoy, gets his... Italian convoy and airplanes. And then now we're doing the West. Of course, they just do all the Americans. 
And then I took down Bomber Command. And I took these things down because I think I'm going to have to do this the shuffle with the British fleet too for the following turn. Uh, the Soviets did that. I flipped over the American. And he got um, this. Uh, the fifth task force now became uh, the U.S. task force now became, I like to joke and say, became a real boy. He got upgraded to a real armored unit. So he's much happier. Uh, the Axis they had a garrison, so they went ahead and built him in Germany. We were talking about where's the best place to put that garrison if the guy comes from the north. And it's like that hex that I just pointed to, this hex here. This hex here is like this hex here in England. They can land adjacent to you, but they can't walk into your, um, to your cities because they're in your zone of control. They must attack you, which gives you a turn to react. So a garrison sitting there plus, you know, a couple of units behind Germany that can reach to counterattack, and you're fine. Uh, allies might still try and do it, but I don't suggest it because you don't get very far. Unless you've got two surprise attack markers and you can do one direct invasion on him to make him retreat and then invade adjacent, you know, to an adjacent hex and capture the, the city he doesn't defend. So there is that, but... Um, if I can get him to spend two surprise attack markers to attack me in northern Germany, uh, I think I'll be happy. I think I can contain him. Uh, yes, and then uh, I did have a garrison, I guess, to build, which I built in Birmingham. Uh, there's no diplomacy. Victory, end of turn, is we just get... Some stuff on the tracks here. He gets an armor. Whoops, wrong one. What am I opening that one for? So he got a, a garrison to build. Uh, I get to move all my stuff down here. So those guys will be back next turn with four sorties. At the end of this next turn, at four sorties. Uh, so yeah, I picked up a free forces, a partisans, an ultra. <laughs> Excuse me. An ultra, and uh, I got some uh, another upgrade for the allies for the Soviets. Okay, and I started taking August stuff for Soviets. And I said, "Wait, wait, that needs to go back." Did I put it back? No, I didn't put it back. I'll get it anyway at the right time. I think I took it too early. So just like the Italian that's in the Netherlands, that's not allowed. Where's my, there's my mouse. Okay. So then we went on into July. We know it's all fair weather. So we just said, he said, we've got enough time. Let's do it. So we're just doing the production. Uh, you know, it's kind of set. The, uh, the British are now up to 20. Yay! Um, I think we're at, uh, yeah, we're at... Uh, Strategic Warfare, once again, I think he was looking at it from the standpoint of um, his next sub doesn't come for a while, so he's trying to save the sub for when I actually take a factory from him so he can get it back right away the very next turn by having me. So I don't think he, I think we played, did I play one this turn? Combat commitment. Yes, we went to combat commitment again. He did not play it, and I did. This time I put the altar out there. He rolled a six, and he's halved down to three. But I could only roll a four, so I didn't actually do anything to him. But I did get back a pack. So, like, next turn I will be five, and three is eight, and three. So I'll be at 22 next turn, which is, you know, pretty good considering how much he's been pounding on me all game. And then this game's back in two turns. Okay. Now I think we're in strategic movement. And again, I'm not sure where he went here. I think he took this infantry and put it over here in the Suez Canal area. Because I now have a viable threat. So 
So he wants to have a German unit in both places, both Basra area and Suez area. Not that he could... I don't think he's so much worried about me. Uh, getting ashore. Because he just wants to be able to immediately contain me and then maybe knock me back out. But if he doesn't, I'm contained against, you know, real armies. German armies. Which means I'm not going to make any real headway. For supply purposes and stuff. So, he's just trying to make sure that I'm contained while he deals with the main fronts. And then he puts the Africa army in there. Puts the Turks up there. I don't know why. This is armored up towards the front. Um, he's, he was doing a swap with the Finns last time. He put the strong guy in Viborg and the garrison in <coughs> outside of uh, Leningrad. Um, I've invaded Finland and taken it from him way too many times. Uh, he puts a German in there so it can help. He, now he's, uh, he's basically garrisoning up for a northern invasion. And then I think... Since I didn't have any aircraft for him to bang on, I think he just goes... So he got up to seven. It's four for the armor, two, two for isolation, one for the Spanish. That's seven. And then, what was... Throws in an airplane for eight, nine. And I think he threw in his heavy artillery to get up to eleven, and then minus one uh, makes it Gibraltar, so he's at his maximum plus ten. It's most you can get on a plus. Uh, that's in the rules. The highest you can get is a plus 10. The lowest you can go is a minus 10. Um, so, plus 10. And then he's halved. Um, I am a 1. Because I am uh, 1 for British, 2 for armor, and then minus 2 because I've lowered. So he's plus 10 and halved, and I'm plus 1. He rolled a 1. 1 plus 10 is 11, half to 5 and a half makes it a 6. Still a good chance of flipping. But then I rolled a 5, plus 1 is a 6. So 6 to a 6 is a diamond, and uh, no, not this time. Uh, his heavy artillery will be back in two turns. In September. And then he goes ahead, he wants to attack me again because he's going to try and uh, mess up my supply when I try to supply it. So, um, he's attacking with the armored, the other Spanish, and I, I, this is where I talked to him about this, is, do you really want to attack with that Spaniard, or do you want to move one of your German infantry in there so you can use your tanks marker on it, and you'd be plus two, instead of using up, like, ground support counters. And he was like, you know, you're right, I'm going to do a shift. So he moved to the garrison over there. So you got that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You just put that guy over in Valencia. I don't know. He's thinking he was going to invade from Gibraltar or something. I don't know. And then brought the German infantry in. I would have brought the German garrison myself. Uh, and then throws the tanks marker on. So now he's four for armor plus two for isolation. So that's six plus two for an armored is seven eight. And then the last airplane make, took him up to ten. He went up to 10 and then down one for attacking a city. So he's plus 9 and halved. And then I'm still plus 1. So he rolled a 5 plus 9, which is 14 halves down to a 7. Not quite as good as he could have been, but you know, still, it's a 7. And I rolled a 5 again. So the plus 1 is a 6. And the British, I think this is the 8th army here. British 8th Army holds Gibraltar, kind of like the LL Main State. Then I think he went ahead and attacked with the German armored unit, who is 6, uh, you know, 4 for armored, 2 for 
uh, isolation. So he's at 6, and then minus 2 for the straight and minus 1 for the city. So he's plus 3 in half, so he rolled a 1 plus 3, which is a 4, halves to a 2, and I rolled a 6 again. Then he went ahead and flew the Italian Air Force up to the coast and uh, decided that, uh, oh, I know what it was. The Italian that was here, he moved to Porto in Portugal to keep me from being able to get a free invasion there. And then the garrison that's in Valencia, he moved down here to possibly help with attacks in the future or garrison around this position. So I held out in uh, July here, amazingly enough. Uh, he's been slow, slow marching the Italians back to, um, where, is it? where is he going? I think he's going back to uh, Tripoli here, because he doesn't have a ground unit here. He just wants to have a ground unit there, so I don't try to sneak like a convoy in here and do a silly invasion from Malta just to screw up the Italians some. So he's just like slow marching that guy back because I can't do that right now. Surprise tack markers and stuff. So uh, this is us just straightening out the production. He moved the German up to Oslo. The convoy came back to Malmo so we can keep people in supply. Uh, moved his garrison to the place that we talked about for making sure the invasions are containable. Uh, I don't think he did much else. Yeah, he's in a supply phase, so he just runs up his convoys. Uh, and so now we're in the Western Action subphase. So I moved this convoy. I thought about how to do this, and what I did is I took the convoy that it was zero, and I moved it to where the fleet is. So it's at one, and the fleet is at two, right? Then I took both of them and said, okay, here we go, bang, what you want to do? And he's like, what I want to do is I want to make this thing be very, very low sorties when it actually tries to run supply. So he ran, we did a, this is a fairly involved combat. Um, so my, this is the Italians attacking, um, they were uh, minus five in fair, plus one, which actually should have been a minus four, right, okay. So we know he's going to take one sortie, because he only had five sorties, and he was a minus four, and the most he's going to do is do one sortie on me, because he's going to roll two. And I can't do more than one to him. So he basically just chipped the American fleet. This is important. He chipped the American fleet so it's going to be less effective when he comes after me with the German Air Force. The German Air Force is plus two for German, minus one for sorties, but it gets a plus one because it's attacking the fleet. Therefore, it is actually uh, a plus two total in that instead of a plus one. And then it's his plus two to my minus one. He rolled a 1 plus 2 is a 3, but I rolled a 1, so he still got two sorties on me. And that lets him get through to the convoy, which he attacks at um, plus 2, minus 2 for sorties, plus 1 for being against the Navy. He rolled another 3, but I rolled a 6, minus 1 is a 5, and a 3 to a 5 on the combat table. Hey, combat results table. He rolled a 3, and I rolled a 5 is just enough to actually inflict two sorties on him. So he was not happy, to say the least. Now, he still has his surface action marker, and I do believe he spent it here. He was trying to get me up to as high of sorties as possible. I don't know if he spent it here. No, he let me go. No, he said I'm going to go ahead and spend it here, because he's plus one uh, against my minus three fleet. He rolls a six, and I roll a three, so I'm done with the fleet. And now he's a zero against my convoy. And we talked about whether he wanted to have me um, 
if you wanted to throw the submarines here to try and get me an extra minus two so I'm, he has a better chance of inflicting a lot of sorties. And I think he did that. Yeah, he goes ahead and throws his submarines. So now I'm a minus four. So at best I'm going to get to two. So he has a very good chance of getting at least two. He's hoping to get three sorties on me and then have his airplane stop me when I try to supply the guy in Gibraltar. He did roll a six. I rolled a one. So he got his three sorties. And now the... Those guys end their turn in because they were interdicted. Uh, they now end their turn in Gibraltar. Um, he had two sorties on him, so he'll be three turns out. It's in October. And his submarines come back in two turns. So he'll be back when I have my ultra. So now... I think I'm back to running my airplane again. Um, this was the one that we had already counted it out, and we knew that I could fly around the corner and hit Munich, so I just did. Took a sortie. Then I think I fly myself into Metz. And then he attacks me, of course. He rolled a three, I rolled a one, so he stopped me. And then I sent... I stopped there. With that. I think. Yeah, I'm doing the supply subface, so now we're going to go back down to Gibraltar. So I'm trying to supply him. I only have one sortie on the convoy. It's going out on its own. So the Germans are going to attack me. They are plus two for German, minus four for sorties, which is minus two, and then plus one because they're attacking a navy, so they are uh, minus one. And then I am... Uh, minus <clears throat> two for a convoy, plus two for American, which makes me a zero, and then minus five for sorties, so I'm at a minus five. So I'm getting a one no matter what. It's a matter of whether he rolls high enough to stop me. And he rolled a one. So he ended up as a net one. I'm going to be a one. doesn't matter. I take a sortie, but I supply um, this Brit. So now he's got the same issue he had the last time when I was at. He won't have to run sorties against my fleets to make me be out of supply, but he's going to have to attack a full strength three, and he's going to be whatever he can come up, even with plus ten and plus nine against plus three when you're halved. You've seen how tough Gibraltar can be to be taken, even when I don't have aircraft there. So I've been getting fairly lucky uh, on my die rolls there when I was at low supply. That was important to get those lucky die rolls. But now, um, I think I can hold till September. I don't know if I can hold past September. Because I have to get another set of those really lucky die rolls to not, to make that happen. That's going to be tough to do. All right, we go to the Soviets. Soviets are like done. No supply phase for the Axis. West, guess what? We do the same shenanigans. Um, Reason being, he's used up a lot of his airplanes. He doesn't have his air, his fleet at all. So I'm going to be facing a 3 and a 4 and a 5. So he's going to have to probably fly this airplane up here. He's going to take like this one, uh, the 6er, that's going to become a 4. He'll fly that one up to like Bordeaux. And then he'll fly the 5th Luft, which will be at 0. So he'll only have one sortie and maybe put him down. Uh, I don't know, he might even shift this out of Cadiz, Cadiz and put that one into Cadiz or something, so that he can have uh, a decent chance of screwing up my supply again. But it's only going to be with the airplane. He's not going to have, um, he's not going to have extra aircraft that he can do that with. Um, the biggest problem he has now is because the Soviets aren't in the war. Yes, he has six airplanes, but two have to stay over in the east. Uh, why he has them sitting in Brest, I don't know. Um, if he's going to really true truly do the whole western thing, he should probably have them sitting on the eastern edge of the Polish border so that um, when the time comes he can just fly them into, you know, over to the western front for one sortie. Right now it would probably take two, so I'm not sure why they're sitting where they're sitting, but um, maybe he'll comment on the video and tell us what his logic is there. Um, yeah, so Gibraltar is becoming a real pain in his 
side. Um, it's costing me some fleets, but so far it's been American fleets, so I don't mind. They just get rebuilt and come back, and I just work on them. Um, the next set of fleets that I have to put in there, unfortunately, are going to be British, which is going to hurt me a lot because then I'm rebuilding the British fleet with only 20 or 22 uh, production points. It's going to be very hard to do. So we'll have to see what I have to do at the end of August. All right, so that was a no supply phase there. Sorry, so take out. German replacements, guess what they're going to do? Airplane, airplane, airplane. Airplane, convoy, uh, Italian convoy, Italian airplane, and I think they're done with the replacements. And then the Western replacements, uh, we just go do the Americans first. Um, oh, he just went ahead and built. Uh, so I'm just going to put this down there so I don't forget because I have the points and you go ahead and finish your replacements. And I was like, okay. Uh, See, so yeah, I've now got um, Home Fleet and the Convoy are at zero, so they're going to be the ones that go and replace um, the supply situation in Gibraltar. And I've got Med Fleet down to four. I don't know if I got it down anymore this turn. I think I went and did the convoys. Yeah, I made the threat bigger in the Arabian Sea. The Soviets had forgotten to do an airplane last turn, so they do it this turn. And then we're all done. No replacements, no upgrades. Axis did their mobilization already. The West. Uh, what did I build? Oh, I built another aircraft that has been sitting around. I remember that one I eliminated. And then the two, the American 8th Fleet and 3rd Convoy, come in in East North America. Uh, Soviets did not build their convoy. There's no diplomacy. There's no victory. We'd go to the end of turn. Doom, da -doom, da -doom, doom, 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 doom. Oh, wrong thing. Oh, maybe not. Uh, the turn track. Yeah, the Germans are going to go up a factory because they get an economic. I'd already taken the heavy artillery from last, last time by accident. So, uh, yeah, we just go here. I put my stuff in the mobilization box that got eliminated. Uh, we moved the German economic marker to the end of 43, so now he's going to have another factory. So if you look, he should be up to 3, 4 now. How is he up to 5? He shouldn't be at 5. He should be at 4. Because he gets 1 in June, 1 in December, and then 3 and 4. So that should actually be here. Another thing we did wrong. <coughs> and we're in August, and that's the end of the log file. So that's where we live. We live. Uh, the Germans do have to redress. They've had a full turn worth of movement, so I don't have a problem with them fixing the fact that there's an Italian garrison in an active uh, Netherlands, which they can't do. So they'll have to decide if they want to have, like, this Italian be, you know, somewhere else in a German uh, garrison. So when you see this again, this will be fixed, because this can't be. And, um, yeah, and then the uh, factory count will be straightened out for the Germans. They should be at plus four, not plus Five. They get to be plus five at the end of 43. December of 43, they'll go to five extra factors. So, I mean, the Germans are doing okay. Um, I've got them a little bit stretched on their timeline. Because normally they like to have all their aircraft rebuilt and sitting uh, along the, the western front here. Like, they usually like to have two or three airplanes right in here so that the whole bombing campaign doesn't hit, basically. Uh, the fact that he had declared war on Vichy makes my job so much easier because I can fly through Vichy around the corner here, so I need to put something down here to stop that nonsense. Uh, 
and just like uh, what is it? And the reason why he's at in this particular space next to Bremen instead of further south is because um, it cuts off any roundabout trip to like hit Berlin from the back. Um, from a, from account from like uh, Edinburgh, so I need to get like someplace like Newcastle or Hull with another bomber to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So yeah, if I came out of Hull, I could probably get to Berlin. But then he would see me move to Hull, and it was like that would only work one time. And then he'll, you know, make sure that he has his airplane positioned to take care of Berlin. Probably bring one from the east and put it in uh, anywhere where he can guard Berlin. So, I don't know. I'll probably try that with the British next turn. Americans will go down to four, the British will go down to three, and then we'll have two bomb markers for the following turn. We'll have to wait and see. All right, so that's Unconditional Surrender. Uh, I'm Dread608. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up button. That helps the algorithm YouTube. Also, uh, when people are searching for this, it also helps me, uh, motivates me to go ahead and make more videos and get my opponent to sit and play another session with me so we can do another video like this. Um, this game is uh, it is designed by Salvatore Basta. It is published by GMT Games. The developer is Mark Dye. Uh, you can find a module of this. This is the Vassal module, which uh, with permission of Sal, I have made uh, several upgrades, bells and whistles. This is all I've really done. Like You used to have to put sortie markers on top of your aircraft like you do in the board game. Um, I got permission from the designer, uh, Sal, to go ahead and put these little counters on the on the actual airplanes so that you can just, when you get your sorties, you can see it right there. You don't have to look at the sortie counter and have extra stack things up because you know, it's easier this way. Uh, the biggest problem we used to have is when you would stack like uh, a Navy and an Air Force like I had in Gibraltar, and then you'd have sortie counters on them. You'd have to make sure the sortie counters were on the right you know, in between the right units and stuff. This way you can't lose track of it, so it makes it life a little bit easier. Um, there were two suggestions. One was to make the sortie counters like only a quarter size and just be a number, you know, kind of thing, uh, which is how the BGA module works, which is okay because, hey, you can... Uh, it works very well there. There is a board game arena module of this. Um, it is... I would say 95, maybe higher percent correct with all the rules. There's just a couple that, by the way the rule book is written, you're supposed to be able to do a couple of things that technically I don't think in the real war anyone would ever do, like um, not give any supply to your guys on an island like Palma, and then they would go into no supply and you could remove them and rebuild them somewhere else. <coughs> The BGA module says, you don't need to check supply, you're in supply, I'm not going to let you do that. Um, and then, uh, I think we've gotten all the, there's been a couple of hexes that didn't do the movement points right and stuff there, but we've gotten all those corrected, I think. So, and then the only other little uh, thing that it does is when Soviets are collapsed, they're not supposed to be able to move for the rest of the operations phase either, but it allows them to. So, I mean, that's like the only real two things. And then uh, repatriation, uh, not repatriation, but uh, home defense things. Um, he can tell if you're not in home defense, but he can't like force you to move your units. You can just say, I can't, uh, can't survive, you know, can't make it good. Can't fulfill home defense and just move on. Uh, I had one player that did that. He set up completely illegally, got the messages for home defense, did not did not put his stuff back, and 
uh, I just told him I didn't want to play with somebody that wasn't going to play by the rules. And so we just abandoned the game because uh, there's a real, there's a game balancing factor in, in those home defense rules. Uh, since this is at such a you know army level thing, it's like there were perceived threats by both high commands that like the British always have to keep an airplane in England, even in 1944, when there's not really a threat of the German Air Force you know, coming and bombing the bejeebers out of you, you still have to keep an airplane, even if it's bomber command. You have to keep an airplane in England. You have to keep a ground unit in England or within three hexes of it. So, you know, there's balancing factors there. Same thing for the Soviets and their aircraft and stuff and, and garrisons and things. So, you know, he's, he's enforced some of that, um, which I really like. I mean, it, it's a matter of taste for some people. Um, obviously, when you're playing on Vassal or the board game, you can just ignore it. You, know, uh, you can play the rules any way you like. Anyway, if you like, you like what you see here, um, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notify button. You'll be notified when I updo, update, uh, upload another video or I uh, schedule out a stream. I uh, am streaming Unconditional Surrender on the BGA module uh, in similar strategic attempt, the Cuckoo Campaign, <coughs> here. So you can check that out on my channel. Um, and yeah, this is being, this is in a P500 from GMT, so if you want to get a hold of this game, go to the GMT website and sign up to get one of these. As soon as we get to 500, they'll put it in the queue to get reprinted. And send it out to all of us. So, and I think we're around 400. So we need a few more people to go buy that game. All right. I think that's enough for today. So until we meet again, stay safe and bye-bye.